Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. The title of our webinar is the Midwestern Credential Transparency Alliance, Building Pathways for States and Regions. And for those of you who have been involved in this work in the past, it's nice to see you again and to um, give you an update on how things are going. I know we've taken a bit of a pause in this work, but we're um, rejuvenating it and getting back to work here at MAC in collaboration with Credential Engine and helping the Midwest make some sense of the credentialing eco space. I just had a few reminders I wanted to go over real quick before we start the webinar, as well as some introductions. First of all, we are recording the webinar, and it will be posted to the MEC website in its resources pages after it's recorded. If you would like to ask a question, please don't put it in chat. Please put it in the Q&A section, um, which you'll find right next to your chat at the bottom of your screen. And then finally, please, at the end, you will receive an email with some follow-up materials and information. One of the things you'll see is um, an assessment, a little tiny survey to see how we did on the webinar today so that we can do even better in the future. If you're interested in becoming involved with MEC's um, renewed and refreshed um, credentialing activities in 2024, please go ahead and take that survey. There's a chance in there for you to give us your contact information and an indication that you would like to be involved. So thank you all so much. Let me do some brief introductions here. First of all, um, you're all going to recognize this guy, Jeff Gran, uh, Credential Solution Lead at Credential Engine. He'll be with us today. Uh, Jeannie Kitchens, the Chief Technology Services Officer at Credential Engine. And behind the scenes, but doing a tremendous amount of work, and the main person who built uh, the Pathway Finder is Sneha Edula, the Solutions Developer for Credential Engine. So thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over now to Jeff. Great. Uh, thanks, Jenny. Uh, and excited to re-engage with the MCTA group here. Uh, just as kind of a run of show here about the agenda, I'm going to share with you a little about MCTA, uh, some context about this uh, pathway work, but then really turn it over to Jeannie and Sneha to uh, give you more of the context and explanation about how the pathway builder works, uh, what it can do, and uh, do a little demo. And then uh, I definitely encourage you all to uh, use the QA function, like Jenny mentioned, to capture questions uh, as we go. But then we're also planning to have some time at the end for open Q&A and discussion. So I think that'll be really rich. We can start thinking about how this work might be applied in your context uh, so that we can have more uh, pathway information available to the public. Uh, so before getting uh, into the meat of the presentation, though, I wanted to share a little about Credential Engine. Uh, Jeannie, uh, myself, Sneha all work at this nonprofit organization. Uh, and we have a mission around making uh, available to the public the information that they need to advance uh, their career, find the pathway that's right for them. Uh, so that's right in the heart of what uh, our organization is all about. And we know that this is something that is uh, super important to millions of people. Um, increasingly, as uh, jobs change, as the nature of work changes, uh, there, go there will be more and more people uh, increasingly looking for guidance and information about uh, what pathway is right for them. And so uh, in that context, and just to kind of contextualize what we're talking about here, uh, if you think of a credential as any kind of uh, way that a person showing their suitability for a role, it encompasses all kinds of things. And we've done our own research to find that there's over a million credential offerings in America alone. And so uh, I have a lot of sympathy for the person who's trying to make sense of all of that information and all the connections amongst and between uh, the credentials that they might be pursuing, uh, the jobs that they're hoping to get, and the skills that they're acquiring along the way. And so uh, we think this pathway uh, approach and, and the tool is going to be a helpful resource in uh, making all of that information much more explicit and easily available uh, to the public. So MCTA, I, I won't give you the whole rundown on it. Uh, so many of y'all have been involved with the work. Uh, we've linked here to the charter. I think one thing I wanted to highlight, though, is just how uh, one of the outputs from this kind of collaborative community has been thinking through how can the tools that we're using on a regular basis natively support credential transparency? 
And we've had some great uh, successes in that regard. Uh, the parchment con master contract that MEC uh, negotiated uh, has led to a business partnership with Credential Engine. And now uh, that tool can natively support linking uh, data about credentials uh, from the parchment tool. So it, it's a fantastic output. Uh, I think there's probably plenty more opportunities for us to reflect on and think about as you consider pathways and the tools that you're using uh, to manage pathway information. Uh, we know that a lot of people are actually involved in managing pathways. We did a little research as uh, what's actually one of the first things that uh, this group decided to get uh, more information about uh, was just what are the pathways in the Midwest? And it didn't take long before we found uh, here 692 pathways documented uh, for the public, often as PDF documents or websites. And uh, the contents of those pathways were, as you would expect, mostly credentials, a lot of credential connections. Uh, but there's other bits and pieces of information that's important too. And so we needed um, to use this as guidance for designing a pathway builder that could support the use cases that are already in the field that people are already um, producing on a regular basis. And um, I just, I pulled up here as, uh, well, one, uh, the, these slides will be available for y'all and, and the links to the report is will be in there if you wanna read more about that research. But I did wanna highlight this one testimonial we got from a pathway administrator in the Midwest who, you know, was just kind of, um, I wanna say frustrated, but just like, didn't feel like there were a lot of good options uh, to manage pathway information in any other way besides PDF documents. And it, you could tell it's a lot of work doing this by hand. Uh, the information about credentials changes all the time, let alone the connections amongst those credentials. So having better tools and resources is an important piece of supporting credential transparency. Um, so that's all preamble for the main show here. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeannie uh, to tell you a little more about uh, Pathway Builder. Thank you, Jeff, and hello, everyone. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. <clears throat> um, before we get started on the Pathway Builder, um, I hope some of you are familiar with this, but we probably also have folks who are new to Credential Engine, and this is just a high-level overview that will relate to the Pathway Builder. Um, the work that we do at Credential Engine is based on the Credential Transparency Description Language. It's a common language for describing characteristics of credentials, and all those things that Jeff just showed goes into Pathways. It's a very large language that we maintain. And we also maintain a suite of publishing tools. The badge publisher that we're going to demo today is just one of several tools that are available for the purpose of converting information into CTDL or Credential Transparency Description Language linked open data and publishing that data to the open web and the credential registry. The credential registry is meant as a long-term data store for holding that CTDL link data structure. And um, that data is available for consuming from. So products, tools, systems, states can consume data from the credential registry that's all based on CTDL. We can go to the next. <clears throat> and to get an idea of the CTDL and how it relates to the Pathway Builder is what you're seeing here on this slide. If you just focus in on the image on the right, you can see a lot of circles with um, labels next to them that indicate a type of CTDL information, such as credentials, jobs, occupations, um, <clears throat> rubrics, courses, competencies, and so on and so forth. All of the information that you see here in this diagram is covered in the CTDL. A good chunk of it is covered in the Pathway Builder. And the arrows that you're seeing are notional to give you the, to indicate that the purpose of the CTDL is to describe all of these kinds of things and to link that data together. So that's just kind of some foundational information. And now let's take a look at the Pathway Builder. The Pathway Builder for Illuminating Pathways. We can go ahead, Jeff. 
So the pathway builder builds on the credential transparency description language. As I said, it is a tool that is within the credential registry publishing system that's available for anyone to use. And what it does is it builds off the data in the credential registry to communicate learning and career pathways. Um, the tool enables publishing existing or new, creating new um, CTDL uh, uh, learning and career pathways. And um, it is meant to provide beneficial information in the credential registry um, for everyone to use, including your stakeholders. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the goal the goal of um, the, the pathway builder and the goal of the CTDL and the goal of the registry is to empower people to build um, CTDL data in the credential registry that's foundational to pathways and to link those components together. And the output of that is going to be human for you and I to understand and machine readable. So it is interoperable and can power tools and other kinds of systems and applications. So pathways come in many shapes and sizes, and no matter the type of pathway that's out there, um, we see, for example, this is a, a screenshot from a, a web page um, <clears throat> and a, another format. This is an image that we call, I like to kind of think of it like a poster that's just meant to um, get people excited and interested in a pathway. And we also have um, PDF documents, there are spreadsheets. I didn't put an image of a spreadsheet in here. And we also have um, other types of images that people use. I think there's one more click there. And we just wanna kind of get an idea here that um, learning and career pathways are portrayed, managed, you know, put together in many different ways to convey meaning to people. And it's great to have these posters. They are very, very useful but we cannot really tell exactly what that pathway consists of when I look at a poster or an image. What do I really have to do? What is included? And it's also not data. And of course at Credential Engine, you know, we're all about the data. <clears throat> so some of the Pathway Builder key features are that um, through the Pathway Builder that you're, you're, we're going to show you this, you can pull data from the Credential Registry and you can pull data that you have published to the registry as well as data that others have published. So you can mix and match um, sources of data for your pathways. It's an interactive drag and drop tool. Um, and you will see that in our demo as well. And you could use that tool to build very simple to very complex pathways. And you can combine that data from multiple sources and publish that data to the credential registry. <clears throat> Who should be using the Pathway Builder is always a great question to ask. Um, <clears throat> the Pathway Builder users um, include professionals and organizations that are designing or using existing learning and career pathways to help achieve their goals. However, you can also use the Pathway Builder to design new pathways. So if you have a team that's working together and you're trying to think through how to construct a pathway, you could use the Pathway Builder. And it's useful to uh, professionals who are with education, training, and other types of credentialing organizations, employers, professional associations, and other types of organizations that play a role in designing or housing created pathways. And when you're going to build a pathway, it's not going to be an automatic path of process. The pathway builder does not automatically build a pathway for you. What it does is, is creates a drag and drop interface for you to build a pathway from data. And um, to do that, you're going to prepare. You're going to have a process, a thinking process, right? Um, is it a pre-designed pathway or a framework to design a new one? Um, you'll do want to do a little analysis and planning. What, <clears throat> what components should be in the um, pathway that I'm designing? Um, <clears throat> and you're going to want to publish pathway resources to the registry and get deeper, determine things like a progression model. We won't go into progression models today, 
but that's a layer on top of a pathway that can help um, frame how a person can journey through and uh, a learning and career pathway. And this information, um, <clears throat> as well as an entire suite of guidance is available from our website. Um, there are videos, step-by-step um, -step instructions, um, Google Slides, all available for anyone to use under an open license. No login is required to access those materials. And assuming we'll do Q&A at the end, um, uh, let's go ahead and jump to the Pathway Builder demonstration. Okay. So what you're seeing here is the Pathway Builder. And <clears throat> um, Sneha is showing, um, let me move that out of my way here so I can see. Sorry, I just needed to make a little adjustment here. <clears throat> Um, Sneha is literally showing the Pathway Builder, and what she did was she just signed into her Credential Engine account. Anyone can have a Credential Engine account, and she signed in, and she went to the menu, and she selected from the menu, she selected the Pathway Builder. So it's literally part of our suite of publishing tools. Now, what you're seeing here is we, we call the Pathway Builder, of course. Go ahead and go to the Pathway Builder. Um, and, and you're going to hear some terminology that I'm going to use so we can understand what we're looking at here. So what we're looking at here is the Pathway Builder board, and that's where we build the pathway. And you can see um, some rectangles that I'm going to call cards that are already on the board, and Sneha is moving her mouse over them. And I'm going to get into those more in just a moment. But I just want to introduce some concepts here of a board and cards. And we're going to take a little tour here. And what we're going to do is start at the top of the board. And we have this header. And on the left of the header, we can see who created the pathway. In this case, it's Credential Engine, and it's, and it's on our sandbox. That's why it's called that. And we can see the name of the pathway. And this is my, my pathway that I call the Certified Nurse Assistant Micro Pathway. And whoever creates a pathway, names the pathway, whatever is you know applicable to what they're building. Below that, there's a button <clears throat> um, that opens up, and I was going to go ahead and click on that. And when you're building a pathway, the first thing you're going to do is describe that pathway. What is the name of it? What is a description of it? And you can see here there's some red asterisks. That means red means required, and you can see very little information is required. We got to know at least know what the name of it is in a description. But we always encourage adding context to data for human readability and machine readability. So we can see here that we could add a lot of other information. And let's just take a look at a couple of pieces of it. Um, Sneha is going to go ahead and add um, <clears throat> a couple of pieces of information. And she's going to add um, <clears throat> an industry to it using a NAICS code. For those of you who are familiar with NAICS codes, you don't have to use NAICS codes. You could also just type industries in there. And she's also going to type in an occupation. She's going to type in nursing. And for those of you who are familiar with ONET codes or SOC codes, you would see that adjacent to where she just typed nursing, there's actually a, a SOC code or an ONET code. And the system is preloaded with those. So all you have to do is select them if they're applicable. And she's just going to add one more piece of information. We want um, people who um, want to partake in this pathway to know that there are support services available. So she's doing a search of the registry for nursing occupation support services that have already been published. And she's going to add that to the pathway. And she's going to save it. So now we have our information that describes this overall pathway that we're going to be building. And let's take a look at the rest of the header. So to the right of that button, we see we can save, we can edit, um, we can approve pathways. And there's a little grayed out area there that would let you know if there were any conflicts that you needed to take care of. Um, but we won't have any conflicts today. <laughs> You'll also see a settings buttons where you can turn a grid on and off and you can, um, <clears throat> and turning the grid on and off will um, show, basically show a grid around those cards. Go ahead and do that, Sneha. Yeah, so you can see 
what a grid looks like. So sometimes that's just helpful in laying out the board. And then to the right of that, you can see a share symbol. That's for sharing your find your published um, uh, pathway. And the, probably the really important thing here at the top is this little question mark, because when Sneha clicks that, you're going to see a whole list of materials that walk through um, everything you need to know about the Pathway Builder. Um, each section of this table of contents here includes a little short video, includes Google Slides, and you can see there, there's also a YouTube playlist embedded. So everything you need to know to get started and use a tool is right here. It's also on the website, that's a public website. So you do not have to log in to get all this information, but it's handy to have here when you're looking at the tool. Okay, and that's the header. Let's take a look at the left side of the board. We're gonna call it the left rail. And you can see in the left rail, the very top thing that we see there is search the registry. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and search the credential registry. So <clears throat> what we can do is we can filter and we can identify if we only want to search things that my organization published. We could search everything in there, but we're going to go ahead and search for things that my organization published. And we're going to grab a couple of um, resources that have been published to the credential registry. And so now it's going to go ahead and filter. She's going to go ahead and add a credential <clears throat> there, that blue box she just added is literally a credential from the registry. She's going to add a course from the registry. <clears throat> so she's doing a search. She's going to find a specific course that she wants to add, build this pathway. And there it is. She found it. She's adding it. And finally, she's going to add a competency from the credential registry. So literally everything that Sneha is searching on is published to the registry. And she's simply clicking the plus icon. And that's all we're going to search for right now. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And for those of you who have ever done an online photo album, this is, this is going to resonate with you. you. You search for your photos, you upload them, and you add them to the equivalent of what we're calling this left rail. And then you have them there ready to drag and drop onto your album. This works the same way. Now we've We've literally gotten these resources from the registry on these cards or components, and we're able to drag and drop them onto the board. So we've looked at searching the registry, and we've seen that when we do that, it populates all the, all the components that we found in the registry there, ready to drag and drop. Let's take a look at the tab right next to the resources that says um, selected. I'm sorry, components library, <laughs> components library. The components library is, um, <clears throat> is a, a set of endless supply really of empty resources. It's for data that's not published to the registry. And you could see each type of card or component that you can build a pathway with. So we know we could have assessments in our pathway. We can click the question mark and see, well, what does that mean? And because these are empty and they haven't been published to the registry, it means they're empty containers for us to fill in as we build our pathway. And if Sneha just kind of goes down the list there, we can get an idea of all the kinds of components that one could use to build a pathway, including courses, assessments, credentials, competencies, jobs, um, co-curricular, work experience, all these things can be in a pathway. You don't have to use all of them. You use whatever is applicable to you. Okay, so that's the component library that's available for you to build your pathway. Now let's take a look at the cards that are on the board. So ahead of this webinar, we went ahead and did a search of the registry and we added a credential on the far right there. <clears throat> And we put it in a column called destination. Every pathway has a destination to go to. And the way we're going to read this board is left to right. And you can see that adjacent to the card that's under destination, we have a card called assessment. And there's an arrow that goes left to right. And what we're going to do is build out a little mini pathway here. We're going to add the arrows to it that convey um, navigating the, the pathway from uh, left to right, and behind it is data. So when we publish this to the registry, and go ahead, Sneha, I add those arrows. 
Um, <clears throat> when we publish it, publish it to the registry, behind it is all the data. So a, so a system that would like to build pathways, maybe personalized pathways for students, could take this data and utilize it in their system and understand the progression of this pathway. Now, what this is telling us so far is that we have uh, two courses and we have a work experience. Um, those are the three cards stacked up there to the left of the assessment. And that you take, you complete those, and then the next thing is an assessment. And then once you complete the assessment, you know, of course, providing you pass it, then you're going to get this credential here. And of course, this is just a demo pathway. So, um, <clears throat> you know, take, take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, you would need to take more courses than this to earn a um, certified nurse assistant micro credential. Now, you may have noticed a little green pop up occurring every now and then saying it saves the pathways automatically being saved. Okay, now let's um, go ahead and um, add some more cards to our pathway. Let's do a little dragging and dropping. So remember, Sneha grabbed some resources from the registry and dropped them in the left rail. And she's gonna drag and drop them directly onto the board and she's placing them in an order to continue that pathway from left to right. So she's gonna go ahead and drag those cards in. We have the course, the competency, and um, the credential. She's gonna place them all down there. And we're also gonna go ahead and show you how to use a selected component. So now Sneha is gonna to go to our never ending library of empty components. And she's gonna go ahead and grab a co-curricular component Notice how it has a red border around it. It means, hey, I'm empty, come fill me in. So she's gonna click the three little dots there and edit. And every card, you see those three little dots. And if you click edit, the edit window is always gonna come up on this right side. <clears throat> so she's gonna give the minimum required data and that's definitely a name, but she's gonna add a couple of other things. She's gonna say the name for this co-curricular is a nursing expo. Um, the description is to participate with the nursing expo. And she's going to give it a category of a uh, work-based learning activity. <clears throat> and she's gonna go ahead and save it. Our red border is gone. This component is ready to go as a part of our pathway. Let's add one more. Let's add an assessment. So Sneha is gonna pick an empty assessment from the left rail there. She's gonna drag it on over to the board and place it um, in a logical location um, <clears throat> between the three cards there on the far left and the credential that she just dragged there. And it is empty, it's got a red border. So she's gonna hit those three little dots and we're going to add data to it. Now, one of the interesting things you can do with the pathway builder is there's three types of components or resources that you could add on the fly as both data, a, a resource in the registry and assessment in the registry and a component in a pathway. <clears throat> um, you have to think of pathway components as like proxies for data because you know it's kind of like when you, when you create post-it notes on a list, the cards are kind of like the post-it notes and they're, they're linking together the data. But ultimately, it is the data in the registry that has the rich descriptions that are being linked here. So we can do a twofer. We can publish to the registry, and we can create the, um, the component. And Sneha is going to go and fill in some information here, as you can see. And she's going to go ahead and save it. And when she saves it, <clears throat> it's going to go ahead and add that component um, and get rid of that red border around there. Um, as well. Okay, there we go, success. And go ahead and, and save. So what just happened was she actually published an assessment to the registry that wasn't already published and she added it as a component. So that was really cool. Um, <clears throat> and you notice it keeps saving. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of saving your work and you can always click that save button on the top there to save any time as well. You don't want to lose your, ever lose your hard work, even though it's auto saving all along the way. 
Now we have these components here. We need to add our connectors. <clears throat> Um, a pathway would not be complete. We would not be able to publish it if all these cards were just sitting here on the board without the connectors to indicate a progression of how to navigate through the pathway. So <clears throat> what we can do is go ahead and add some connectors. And what you're going to notice is Sneha is just clicking. She just clicks on an orange dot on the left and then clicks on the orange dot on the right and the connector is being drawn. And again, What's really cool is that behind this, all of this is data. What you're seeing as an arrow is not called an arrow in the data. It is literally data that's indicating, you know, this course comes before this assessment and so on and so forth. So it's all the data you need to replicate um, what you're seeing here in terms of an ordering of operations. So this is um, this pathway is done. We could publish it just like this. Um, it's met all the requirements to be um, published as a simple pathway. Um, <clears throat> and this is our what we call our first level of expression. There's three levels of expression with a pathway where you simply have these connectors. And by connecting them, as I said, in the data, you're indicating a progression through a pathway. But we can also, if we want, add what we call conditions. And we'll just go ahead and add one of those, and then we'll be done building this little, little pathway, and then we can take questions. So Sneha is going to remove a couple of arrows, and you can see here how to do that. <clears throat> so anything you do, you can undo. And she's going to remove those arrows. And from our empty component library, she's going to grab a, um, <clears throat> a condition. And this is where we're going to put a little bit more information in about the condition um, that you have to meet before you take that assessment. Um, so <clears throat> Sneha is going to click our little three little buttons. <clears throat> and um, the condition is um, medical terms. And <clears throat> the, de the description is that you have to complete the course the co-curricular activity and demonstrate the competency. Um, you, and that's going to be three conditions. And so Sneha is going to indicate that all three conditions have to be met or as opposed to two of three or one of three, um, that, that all three of them have to be met. And she's just going to go ahead and fill that information in. She's going to in indicate that all three conditions have to be met and she's going to save. <clears throat> And what this did is it gave us a visual to indicate, oh, okay, there's additional requirements here, conditions to progress through this pathway. And in the data, it's included that as data again. So not only do you know how, a, how to represent this pathway, but you have additional information about requirements. And there's a third level of expression called constraints, but we're not going to get into that today. That's a third level of complexity. But what Sneha can do now is put those arrows back. She's gonna connect the course to the condition, the competency to the condition, and the co-curricular to the condition, and then connect that condition to the assessment. <clears throat> and this pathway is completed. Now, now that it's completed, um, we could publish it, um, we can share it, <clears throat> and we can also um, do things like click on a card and it will um, light up all of the direct connections to the card that you click on. So when you have a real complex pathway, this is really useful to get a better understanding of where the connections are. So Sneha goes to some other card and clicks it. It's going to highlight all of those connections, all of those pathway components that are directly connected to the card that she clicked on. Um, and that is our demonstration. And we can definitely take questions. We can just go ahead and leave it up here. Thank you so much, Jeannie and Sneha. Um, we do have a question in the question box. Um, it says, what if you make an error in the pathway? How are you able to correct it? Oh, okay. Well, since we do have time, let's make an error. <laughs> so is already going to do that. She's going to create an error. She's going to try to, um, yeah, see that arrow that she took away. Because remember, you have to have the connectors. Um, now we have a conflict that shows there. 
And the error message is going to be as concise as possible. And it literally says you're missing the arrow connecting the condition um, to the card here. So what will happen is if you get errors, it will tell you. And in the guidance that I had referenced, um, <clears throat> there's like two types of errors and it gets into um, which errors would show here and how you correct them. Um, and, you know, basically how you, it's going to tell you, um, and, and try to make it as clear as possible with your error, error message. <clears throat> Great. Great question. We love questions. So please, yes. please ask some questions, everyone. Well, I'm, <laughs> yes, please. I'm encouraging you all to do so. Maybe you are all, um, just so impressed that you don't have anything to, to ask or, or maybe, you're just processing it all, but we'll give people a moment. I yeah. have to say, this is so exciting um, to, to see um, this very tangible, very helpful um, product come out, deliverable come from the work that we did in all those conversations with MCTA and everything. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, that is, <clears throat> it is definitely tangible, it is definitely available now for folks to use. We did launch it just at the end. I think it was the end of July, maybe July 26th. So it's it's still a baby, you know, so to speak. So mm -hmm. um, we do ask that as folks are, are using it and testing it out to be sure and let us know of any questions you have, mm -hmm. run into any bugaboos, you know, so we can correct them. Um, <clears throat> there's also some additional functionality that I didn't go over today because as I said, um, in our demo time, we don't want to go too deep, right, Jenny? Because it's it, right. it's a lot. What we already did here was a was a lot to think about. Um, so well, that's what I'm I, thinking. Is I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm sure if I got in there and played with it, I would develop questions. Right now, I'm just yes, I'm for sure. And there's a lot more depth you could go into, and a lot more really cool stuff you can do where you could like group components. Um, so I'll just do a little talking. If a question comes up, let me know. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, well, and Angel, wait, that's here we got fun. one. Uh, Does okay. the builder address pathways with multiple options? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this pathway here um, could have more than one option. So you could, for example, you could say do this or do that, right? Um, <clears throat> and so, so um, it could be, you know, for example, it could be, and we would want to have conditions in there. And that's why Sneha is moving over those conditions, because if you just had the arrows, like right now, this really could be read as possibly as, oh, are these two ways to get there? Like, do I have to do all of it? Or can I do just the stuff that links the arrows to the top? Or can I just do the stuff that links the arrows to the bottom, right? But so if you add your conditions, you can put in the conditions to, to basically communicate that you do this or you do that. So yeah, you could have, you'll have one destination always um, at the end there under that destination component column. So everything's going to one destination, but you could also link pathways together for really complex ones. So if this is like a sub component of a larger pathway. That's a cool thing you can do as well. That would be another webinar, like deep dive, you know, how to how to do a deep dive or something into the, the builder. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So I might have missed it. And this might be a very naive question, but this is one. Well, I'll get to mine in a moment. We've got another one. Um, it says, can credit for prior learning be an option in here? <clears throat> yeah, um, that's a really great question. Um, and I wonder if that because. We don't have, so on your left rail here, <clears throat> that's me, I was showing earlier, that list, it's in alphabetical order, you know, A to W, are all the specific types of components that you build a pathway with. And as I said, you don't have to use all of them, or you can if your pathway requires it. Um, one of them, of course, is assessment. Um, we don't have one called specifically credit for prior learning. So we would have to have, learn a little bit more about that as to how that could be a like a com specific component in the registry. But I could see where a couple of ways you build it in, um, where credit for prior learning might be assessed and with conditions where you could say, describe credit for prior learning as an option 
for um, progressing. So like up where Sneha did that, yeah, that orange condition box um, up at the top, you know, may, <clears throat> there could be, there could be something in there about credit for prior learning. I'd be very interested in a deeper dive into that sometime in the future um, and how other ways that that might be built in. So if you have any thoughts on that, feel free to share them. <laughs> Great, thank you. Well, so the question I had that I wasn't sure if I had missed it is mm -hmm. say you, you, you complete some very short pathway for some very, um, yeah, um, a small, smaller credential mm -hmm. and you want to somehow figure out if it will stack with another one. Does this help mm -hmm. us figure yeah. out anything about stackability? Yeah. Um, so, okay, Sneha. Now this gets a little complicated, but we do have the component. Well, we, we have two things that we can do. We can search the registry for a component from another pathway. Okay. So <clears throat> we would build in... Like you build a pathway like this one, <clears throat> and let's say you want to start from a specific point in this pathway, then you would you could just add, bring that component and it's bringing all the data behind it in. So you can link it up, link up your pathways um, that way. Um, <clears throat> and let's see, Stina, do we have another? Um, yes. Yeah, Stina, so, so, sorry, go ahead, Stina. I think we can use this. Upskill pathway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> getting into more complexity here, but you can do that. Um, <clears throat> and that would be a deeper dive uh, webinar onto how to how to connect them. So yeah, so Sneha did a search. She grabbed a component that is like a conclusion point of some segment of another pathway. And mm -hmm. we could bring that in. So we don't have to like bring the whole entire thing in and have this gigantic pathway that's, you know, hard to digest. Um, <clears throat> we have some pathways that are like entire bachelor's degrees. Mm -hmm. And those are just kind of crazy from a human perspective to look at, as you can imagine, because they're so big. So there's little tricks you can do to pull, like another thing that, that um, is really helpful, like general education requirements could all be grouped together into one component competencies could all be grouped together into one component because like when you're building a, a, a pathway that has like a whole bunch of gen ed requirements instead of putting every single one of them out there you can just like group them all together and work with it that way so there's other little tricks and tips that you can do a multi-component here that's what Sneha is doing Sneha is on the ball <laughs> she's so wonderful um, she is, what she's doing is she's building what we call a multi-component. And that's when you want to take like a group of things and put them together and say, all these things are combined into one thing in this, in this pathway. So uh, lots of little, uh, of, of deeper dive things that you can do to really build a robust um, pathway here. Wow. So <laughs> something I'm, I'm getting a distinct feeling is that there, there's a there's a lot of depth here and there are a lot of potential ways to use this if if someone is feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. and but but sensing the potential here how, what would be the best way for them to start are there some videos on your um yeah. mm -hmm. some some training yeah. videos things like that they could use oh yeah for sure um here in the tool when you log in you see them but on our public page i think that link was dropped in the chat earlier there's a page mm -hmm. that's got <clears throat> um a whole list. I'll grab that again. We'll get that back in the chat. Um, there's a page that has the instructions that are in like a logical sequence. Mm -hmm. And every section has a video and every section just has a Google slide. So first right. I suggest just kind of like read that over. And then um, we also have a, a new guide um, that we're launching at Credential Engine that will have instructions for all of our tools. And anyhow, that guide and um, contacting us is that we're always accessible. We have an email that I suggest get used called publishing at credentialengine.org. That right. way it doesn't go to any one person, but it gets checked every day by a bunch of people. Right. And we're always happy to answer questions. If possible, jump into a quick Zoom room, you know, and do a little, you know, tutorial. 
But there's definitely a lot of resources there that really get into um, a lot of the details to just to get started and start thinking about it and looking at the potential. And, you know, I always suggest just start simple. Don't try to build too much complexity into it. What we want to communicate here today is you can do the very simple thing, right? And you can do the very complex stuff. You can do both, have the best of both worlds, but start at the beginning, the very best place to start. <laughs> yeah, and, and contact us for sure. Thank you. Well, I'm hoping that a few more folks might have some questions for us, but they're, again, they're probably feeling like I am, that there's so much here. I imagine the questions will start rolling in as people start playing around sure. with this. Jeff, Jenny, did you want to? Well, I just, I just noticed Michael had his hand raised in the Zoom room. Oh. oh. So, Michael, if you wanted to uh, come off mute and ask a question. I am not sure that he can do that in oh. our in our webinar settings here. Michael, can you can you type your question or your comment in the chat? I mean, in the the, the question and answer. Give Michael a moment for that. Anybody else has any questions? We we love questions. <laughs> and this webinar is being recorded as well. So it'll be available for looking back on. As I said, we have a lot of demo um, videos, little videos in our YouTube channel and available from that web page are all there. Um, yeah, just, you know, set up your credential um, registry account. It's free. Using this tool is free. There's no fees for it. And um, you can just start kind of playing around. Thank you. you. Know, definitely, definitely review, review that documentation. Um, you know, learn a little bit about it first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, AI implications. Oh, Laura. <laughs> There are so many AI implications around us right now. And yes, we have we have thought about that. Um, you know, I could see in the future, right, where we could we could probably, you know, leverage AI to help with building these, you know, building out pathways to make recommendations, especially, you know, we work with organizations that are literally creating new pathways and they're they're doing it with maybe a combination of like existing courses, maybe creating new courses, existing credentials and trying to figure out the best way, right, to organize that in a way that brings students success. So I could definitely see in the future where AI could um, help with that. At Credential Engine, we are looking at how we can utilize AI, um, uh, you know, as a, as a helper um, for scaling these kinds of things. You bet. Um, we, Deb Everhart, another um, great Credential Engine person has joined us and would like to add some comments. Um, I was just going to add a little bit more onto the the AI question um, because um, AI works much, much better and is more accurate when it uses structured data. So the more data we all get into CPDL and the registry, the more that can be used to train AI systems and to do accurate and useful things with not only pathways, but also transfer value and stackability and credit for prior learning, et cetera. Yes. <laughs> I'm very excited about what we're gonna see unfold in the next few years. Thank you, Deb. Did anyone else have any more questions? Here we have a something from Jeannie. Would you like to say that, Jeannie? Oh, no, I just want to um, thank everyone for joining today. Thank you, Jenny, for hosting this webinar today. It was a pleasure to have the opportunity to do this and do the demonstration. And we're looking forward to keeping the, you know, keep moving forward into 2024. Thank you so much. And I will just remind everyone to please fill out the survey and let us know if you want to be um, engaged in our efforts um, in 2024 to start, again, chipping away at the complexity of the credentialing ecosystem. There are, there are a lot of ways, a lot of things we can bite off and chew, and we'll, we'll start talking about that early in the new year. 
thank you all so much. I am just tickled pink. This is exciting. And uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye-bye, everyone.